Kevin Martin here, your UT admissions guy. In this workshop, I've recreated and reproduced, with permission, a real UT Austin student application, and I want to walk you through what an admissions reviewer might be thinking as they're reading and trying to assess which admission score to assign this applicant. We'll look at the essays and the resume and discuss the results at the end. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for joining this UT Austin student application review workshop where I have recreated and transcribed their biographical information, resume, and essays with their permission, and I've anonymized the information to walk you through what an admissions reviewer is thinking as they're reading and assessing what personal achievement score to assign to this applicant. So this student, Will, is applying to computer science and they're also submitting a Turing Scholars application. They come from a large suburban public high school from a well-off family uh, who's college educated. So there's not any signs of adversity here. So let's take a look at their academics. So they're doing about as well as you can expect, ranking in the top 2%, scoring perfectly on the ACT with a nearly perfect academic index rating. So the academic index, the rank and test score, is roughly half of the admissions criteria, and then the other half is the personal achievement index score, which is what the reviewer assigns after reading their application. They also seem to be maxing out their AP classes uh, with a nice balance between both STEM and the humanities. So let's scroll down to the resume. So they seem to have quite a deep commitment, um, being a uh, first an instructor and then a regional coordinator for the Code Ninjas Computer Programming Learning Center. And so they've been doing this for, it looks like about two years now. And so they have a, a variety of different roles and responsibilities. It looks like they were over a, a number of different students and even training some new staff. And it's also impressive that they created, you know, a quarter year's worth of, of Python Java curriculum. And so that's obviously something that's impressive when we're thinking about their fit for their first choice major of computer science. And then they continue to deepen and increase their commitment over time um, by becoming a regional coordinator. And so that's obviously impressive because many students are going to be tutors or private tutors. Um, but it's another thing entirely to increase your roles and responsibilities, develop curriculum, train new people. And so these bullet points on the resume can definitely make a difference whenever they are substantive, uh, quantifying their accomplishments and showing exactly how they're rising up within this bureaucracy, for example, and taking on more roles and responsibilities. It also looks like they joined the robotics team junior year and just continuing on that same theme of fit for computer science. Um, they're also an Eagle Scout, having earned a, a number of mayor badges in excess of what's required. Uh, they were senior patrol leader uh, freshman year, and so, right, so this is an Eagle Scout who also has a variety of other leadership accomplishments and commitments, so that's a certain something that certainly stands out. What's also interesting, too, is they have a demonstrated commitment of success and leadership in journalism and lacrosse and also in speech and debate, having served as captain and state qualifier at both journalism and debate. And so that's fairly rare to see from a computer science applicant to have such a well-rounded list of non-STEM extracurricular activities. And so this was a theme that played out in this student's admissions um, process and applications in general, because they have an obvious commitment to STEM and as we'll see later on in their essays, they also wanted to emphasize the fact that they're extremely well-rounded, um, that they have a general interest and curiosity in a wide variety of different things. It's obvious that they're making the most of their resources in their environment. And it's obviously impressive that they're, um, you know, competing at the, you know, regional and state levels and uh, various communications activities. And so we see here a number of different accomplishments, um, including qualifying for state and uh, extemporaneous speaking, qualifying for LD, uh, being an uh, NSDA All-American. And so it's all very impressive. So let's go down to the volunteering section. So obviously a deep commitment, over 500 hours of volunteering. Um, looks like they were a lot working as a lacrosse coach. They've obviously volunteered with Boy Scouts. They were helping on an open source project called Project OWL which was something in, uh, to aid in disaster reliefs for first responders um, as a consequence of Hurricane Harvey. 
It's also cool as well that they have a, a wide variety and number of personal projects. And so if you do have a lot of independent study, personal projects, things you're working with in teams, for example, that may not fit nicely onto your resume or are not part of a formal organization, you know, definitely include it. And so they created a website, organizeddebate.com. Um, they have a, a variety of different types of personal projects that are not limited to even one domain. We have, we have various audio um, activities, uh, working with Raspberry Pi. They made their own weather bots or bots for both Reddit and Twitter, which is also super cool. And so we're seeing here a student with a slightly unconventional resume that is not typical for very high achieving computer science applicants. And so it's uh, it's a certain approach that you can take if you have a variety of different experiences that don't fit neatly into into a specific major to kind of cast a wide net in your resume. And so don't be afraid to apply to um, some of these STEM programs, even though, of course, this applicant does have a lot of STEM activities and interests. Um, it's not what they're limited to. And so if you're wondering whether to apply to STEM, if you don't have that many STEM activities on your resume, I say go for it because there's definitely ways to articulate your fit for major and your ability to do the work um, beyond what shows up on your resume. Because a lot of students, they start things late. They don't have resources at school. And so I totally understand that it can be a tough expectation to think that applying to STEM programs requires an extensive STEM resume. So let's take a look at essay A. So they begin with a portrait of a house in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. We learn that it was uh, one of his um, best friends and lacrosse teammate named Davis. And they required a, a, a lot of help in order to try and get them renewed and, and back to some, some sense of uh, normalcy. So they talk about, obviously, the general devastation of Hurricane Harvey and also some of the awkward moments of even, like, hanging out with your best friend and helping them clean up their house. I mean, it's got to be uh, a very... Uh, a tremendously trying time, obviously, for the family, but then for the for the teammates as well. And it's also okay to to talk about some of these human things. I feel like when students talk about service, they want to try and make themselves to be these invulnerable heroes, um, when in reality, the emotional situation is usually a lot more complex, a lot less straightforward. Um, you know, understanding what your place is or isn't, for example, and, you know, even what your boundaries and responsibilities are for helping. And so this is a, quite a thoughtful essay. It's very common to see Hurricane Harvey essays, understandably so, because of how much devastation there was in the, the Houston and greater um, you know, Bay Area, Southeast Texas uh, region in our state and also uh, in, into parts of Louisiana as well. Um, but what's really cool here is they pivot away from the actual disaster cleanup, and then they found an open source project, Project OWL, that they had mentioned in the um, resume and that they um, reached out to Project Owl to see how they could help out. And then, uh, you know, a few minutes later, they got the green light and it's something they've been contributing to ever since. And so it's it's a, a fairly rare uh, step that you see students make by like, hey, there's a hurricane, there's all these houses that are dead, but then trying to look at the bigger picture and think, okay, I've got some skills and how can I help out with some of these larger problems? And so I think it's a, a certainly a rare quality that you don't see in that many teenagers. That admissions reviewers certainly aren't going to see students make this kind of jump. And so, if you're trying to think of how to um, contribute to different projects or improve your college admissions chances, that's one thing that you can do is consider what skills do I already have, and what are some social causes, open source projects, nonprofits that I can contribute my time and efforts to. And so, it's certainly something that uh, stands out here in their essay A. So I like right away that they say computer science connects many disciplines beyond programming and computing. Again, many computer science applicants, understandably so, are very intensive in STEM. They hit it really hard. They talk about robotics, like the, their entire application just is the minutia of the different programming languages and projects that they've committed. But this applicant will straight away says, well, here's how this applies in AP Physics and Calculus, or how, how I've noticed um, different ways that technology plays a role in AP US history, for example, with government and polling agencies. And they even talk about uh, history and English class group discussions, which I think is pretty cool because they understand that applicant that admissions reviewers are, are scoring many computer science applicants who often admittedly in their essays will talk about being introver introverted or spending, you know, hours and days and weeks in front of their computer. And they say right away that, yeah, you know, I like to 
code. I like these different things, but you know, really the crux of it is about communication and critical thinking. And they've, uh, again, this intersection between technology and their own personal efforts, they uh, acknowledged um, a, a gap in the, the wider speech and debate community. So they created a um, forum that follows kind of the same method of argumentation that you might see in a, in a high school debate round. And so then in the conclusion here, they talk a little bit about their mentorship and education role with Code Ninjas and uh, citing, of course, the curriculum. So that's flagging in the resume, hey, like this is something really cool and above and beyond that I've done. They talk about uh, briefly some of the projects of their students. And, and they also talk about how they've connected with their students over some of their favorite games like um, Fortnite and League of Legends. So that's a, an essay that covers a, a, a lot of territory. So from where we started with talking about history and English and a broad overview, we've narrowed it down more, more deeply here in the second half of the essay. And so it's a, quite a sophisticated response that would certainly stand out to their reviewer. This is also a rather unorthodox and unconventional leadership short answer. So, um, and I've seen this this approach a few times. So sometimes in leadership, you you will get students that understandably have, you know, one state or their you know MVP at their area club team or something, and they just talk about how great they are, which is fine. Like if you're super awesome and you're the leading scorer in your in your league since you've been in elementary school, then go for it. But I think it's a a funny approach to. And I think it's an interesting one to say. Like start off when I started playing lacrosse, I was unbelievably bad, and I knew it. I snuck to the back of my line during drills to avoid embarrassing myself. And I can personally relate to that. And your admissions reviewer is going to personally relate to some of the things that you're going to say. I felt that way playing high school baseball. I had been playing it my whole life, but I just wasn't very good. And the game got a lot faster uh, in high school compared to Little League. And so it just kind of left me behind. And so I definitely chuckle when I when I read this. And it also paints a, a visual image in the reviewer's mind of, of how exactly they were feeling. And they talk about some mentorship of uh, a younger student. And then here, it's kind of an interesting way to slide in more discussion about how they see themselves as an educator and how they've helped out some of their classmates and teammates, and both within lacrosse, but then also within uh, speech and debate as well, and how they kind of solved a problem about how do you train um, novice speakers who you know, might be very intimidated to speak in front of a varsity member in order to, you know, kind of prove themselves and to make an anonymous process and have kind of a clever way to um, record and anonymize the the feedback, I think is pretty neat. And so again, we've, we see a theme here of identifying and solving problems, and that's coming out in uh, all of their different responses. So it's not just the things that they say, but it's the method with which they go about answering and, I, and, I, and having some of these underlying themes come through. So I think this this diversity essay is super cool, and it really hammers home this point of being kind of a multidimensional student who has a variety of different interests. We talked a lot about um, the the software uh, projects that they've worked on. Well, this kind of gets to, to to quote unquote hardware, like an actual literal car and car engine that uh, him and his father helped um, build, and then of course fix. And you know, it's it's quite interesting here. And you know, you'll you'll sometimes hear complaints from like adults will be like, oh, like millennials or Generation Z or like the digital native generation. They don't know how to use their hands or they don't know how to get dirty or they don't know how to, to fix things. Well, this applicant is directly addressing that kind of, and I think sometimes unfounded stereotype by saying like, hey, like I'm not like all of the other kids sitting behind their computers. You know, I do debate, I do speech, um, and I fixed this really awesome car. And this was actually an essay that they spun off and created a, a second long essay for their common app. So this was uh, the foundation for their common application that they that they sent to non-Texas universities. And then what's cool is they segue from talking about fixing their car to having been a, a self-taught um, computer science person. And so uh, it's a pretty funny little vignette. At age nine, my dad signed me up for a STEM summer camp and he sent me with a Windows 3.1 manual, learn Java in 24 hours. Uh, I showed it to Tony and my camp counselor, uh, and he laughed raucously. And so we're understanding here that, that, that they are self-taught, that they entered into computer science a little bit later. That's a theme that will come up in their Turing essay. Um, but then just to hammer the point home, and they say, I follow my interests broadly. You know, I run a sub five mile track, uh, time and track. I play division one lacrosse showcases. You know, I earn Eagle Scout, which isn't something that they had really talked about much before. And then also the NSDA. 
And so this is, uh, you know, uh, providing a much broader context to their, um, to their STEM interest in independent projects. So then in the Turing essay, that's where they save a lot of the dynamite for the STEM and computer science programming robotics experiences that they have. Um, they talk about some of the independent projects that they've created, a lot of the tinkering that they've done in their spare time, um, creating different, you know, variety of different uh, Minecraft mods and um, their own games in middle school, you know, even uh, transitioning to, to audio and working with Java sound is also pretty cool. And they've done independent study uh, computer science because they had already learned a lot of the stuff that was in the regular computer science classes. And so it's a, a student that has kind of a, a circuitous journey to achieving a lot of the skills and capabilities that most students tend to acquire in their classrooms at their summer camps uh, because their parents are computer programmers or, or software engineers, for example. And so um, this is a, quite an effective essay to to give an overview of all of the very specific stem things that they have so it clearly demonstrates that they're capable of doing the work and that they have the interest and curiosity to um, succeed at a high level so i note here that there are a refreshing departure for many of the stem and cs dominant resumes and profiles um, it's just the case that you know students will try and you know focus as much as possible at on stem um, but I think here, the approach of being a generalist is an interesting one, um, particularly in the diversity essay, uh, which then became an essay in its own right. They, they illustrate exactly how they're independently motivated um, without any or little pressure input from their parents. Um, that's a, a concern I hear from admissions reviewers, other professionals, is like, how much is this from the student and how much is this you know, being dictated from the parents in order to build their resume or get them into college? And so... Uh, the student and I went back and forth for quite a while on what the sort of balance in the application should be. We went for this more generalist approach, um, but the outcomes were a little bit mixed overall. So they ended up getting into UT Austin early for computer science. Um, they were not admitted to Turing. I think they were very easily a five. I think maybe a yeah, grumpy reviewer uh, might see them as a four. I think it's very possible they could have gotten a six. I think the likely score is a 5.5. Um, they got into Georgia Tech and Purdue, but they were waitlisted at, I think, like eight or ten other universities. And so this applicant was an experiment um, on my end to see what happens if you really hammer home this kind of generalist approach. And there was a broader conversation of what do admissions counselors look for? Do they look for generalists or do they look for specialists? Um, I think philosophically, I'm, I'm biased towards a generalist approach. It's something that resonates in my own life. Um, but I think in practice, it's a more risk averse strategy for universities to admit students with like a very, very deep and narrow commitment, um, while at the same time claiming they want leaders and claiming they want students who are curious. And so it was a bit of a mixed bag because academically, they're obviously perfect. You know, they're in top 2%, 36 on the ACT uh, and getting waitlisted at a lot of, of universities that I, I think we both would have expected them to get into. Um, the quality of the essays is outstanding. And it's just interesting how, it, you know, holistic admissions can be such a crapshoot and you just never really know what's going to happen. Um, but UT Austin was their first choice. Um, they weren't bummed out about touring. And so uh, it ended up being a lot of time for all these other applications when, you know, UT ended up, you know, is where they're going to be enrolling in the fall. And so obviously it'll be a great addition to UT Austin. I think they're going to bring diverse perspectives to the computer science community and, um, you know, uh, maybe open up some of the introverts a little bit. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find more helpful information at techsadmissions.com slash blog. And in the information section of this video, I provide links to a free online email consultation if you're interested in potentially working together, and links to my book, Your Ticket to the 40 Acres, and my premium course, Getting Into Texas Universities. Thanks, and I hope to see you again soon.